Would you stand with me for the reading of his word today? 1 Corinthians chapter 1, starting in verse 20, if you will. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 20. The Bible says, where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this world? Hath not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? For after that, the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom, knew not God. It had pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. For the Jews require a sign, and the Greeks seek after wisdom. But we preach Christ crucified unto the Jews a stumbling block unto the Greeks foolishness. But unto them which are called both Jews and Greeks, Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God. Because the foolishness of God is wiser than men, and the weakness of God is stronger than men. For you see your calling, brethren, how that not many wise men after the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called. But God hath chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. God hath chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty. And base things of the world and things which are despised hath God chosen, yea, and the things which are not, to bring to naught things that are, that no flesh should glory in his presence. But of him ye are, are ye in Christ Jesus, who of God is made unto us wisdom and righteousness and sanctification and redemption, that according as it is written, he that glorieth. Let him glory in the Lord. Father, I pray that you'd speak to each one of our hearts today and help us as we try to serve you and to know what you want us to say today. Might this be a time of, uh, of just examination in our lives. May you help us to understand what wise really means to us that are called by your name. I love you today. I'm thankful for all that you've done for me. Had it not been for Mount Calvary, then what about me? What about these? God, would you seek out those that are lost in this place today, and may they be found of you. Holy Spirit of God, search us and help us, we ask. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. You may be seated. May I ask you something right up front? How wise are you? How wise are you? Don't, don't all answer at once. <clears throat> How wise are you? Uh, if you're like me, you have to admit that you're kind of dumb, kind of foolish at times. Um, really haven't got it all on the ball. Haven't got it all together. Kind of uh, just hanging out there somewhere and uh, really just need the direction of the Lord all the time. It seems to me that at times and times past and probably times in the future, I hate to admit it, that indeed when I open my mouth, my hoof inserts and I can't help myself, uh, nor can I control my tongue, it seems like, but I want to. I want the Lord to control my tongue, and I want to say the things that He wants me to say. And if I get uh, uh, on a, a kind of a uh, a toot of my own, it's because I'm not in the Lord and I'm in the flesh and doing what the flesh tells me to say or do, and I do something stupid every time. And, and maybe you find yourself exactly like that. But we need to understand it's not really how much you know. Um, I didn't ask you how much you knew. I asked you how wise you were. You see, we can know a whole lot of things. Uh, you, you know, um, <laughs> we can know a lot of things and yet not have any wisdom. We can uh, uh, know how to do things and still not know how, uh, have any wisdom about doing them. And, uh, and, and that's where God comes in. God can change all that in our lives. He can change the way we look at what we do and correct us and help us to become what we cannot be. Does that make sense to you? Have you been made to become what you cannot be? 
I, I can tell you that he's done that for me. And, and I know many of you uh, uh, as well. God, uh, wisdom comes from God. Uh, may I just say that up front? We have to have God to have real wisdom. God takes uh, our intellect and help, uh, helps us to apply it for good, not only in our lives, but in the lives of other people. When, when he takes what we know, what he's already given us, and then applies it to the things that we ought to do and say and be, then we are a, a, a factor in not only our own life, but in the lives of other people. God can make us wise. Now, the world would look at you, if you're a Christian today, and say, say how foolish, how dumb. I've heard people recently uh, say uh, just uh, how foolish Christians are. It's their crutch. It's their cane, if you will. It's their wheelchair. It's their whatever it is that keeps them going. They can't do anything without that crutch. And may I say to you up front, amen to that. Amen. Whatever they want it to be, that's what it is to me. Um, you know, when we, we look at ourselves and we say, we don't need any help from God or anybody else. I, we recently been talking to a young lady, and uh, um, she uh, used to come here, and, uh, and she said, I don't need God in my life. I really don't need God in my life. I don't want to do I want to be strong on my own. I don't, I don't need God. I don't need anybody. I can just do it on my own. And, uh, and uh, probably for a time, that may be so. And then troubles will come. Troubles always come, don't they? And then uh, there was things that will come that no one can do anything about. We can't fix the problem. We can't solve the problem. We can't do nothing about the problem. And so then there's, there's God. And then we go to him, and, oh, God. Here's my problem. Oh, God, would you help me with my problem? Oh, God, would you help me? Yet, we seemingly, in our Christian lives, now listen carefully, we seemingly, we just want him to fix it. We don't want his advice on how to overcome it. We just want him to fix it. It's, a, it's just, would you, God, would you just put a Band-Aid on this problem I got? I just need you to throw a big Band-Aid on this problem, and, and I'll be done. You don't need to uh, worry about me anymore. I'm, it's over. I'm all right now until the next problem. And may I say to you, the next problem will come rather quickly. You see, when we get to the root of the problem, it's because we haven't used the wisdom of God that he's given us to, to, uh, to work out the things that on a, on a permanent basis. It's, it's on a temporary fix that we really get uh, problems fixed today, it seems like. We want it done quick. We want it done entirely and perfect in every way, and we don't have to, have to do anything to, to get it done. <laughs> well, may I say to you, that's not exactly um, my thought of how God works, at least not in my life. We know a lot of things in our life. We, we've uh, been able to uh, uh, learn some things, and... Uh, you know, when you're 70 years old, uh, you've been some places, done some things. Ernie told me he'd been around the world three times, and uh, I'm not going to say anything that would amaze him. Uh, probably I won't. <laughs> I may say that up front. Uh, around the world three times. I've been around Fairfield County a couple times, and even got over into Perry a couple times, but uh, not around the world. And, uh, and, and we can know a lot of things. We can, we can know how, if you would uh, look at uh, Jim McCoy, and uh, uh, you would understand that uh, you, he can teach you how to cut a board. But, but only wisdom, wisdom helps us to build a home. We, we can cut a board, and, and we can uh, uh, put a screw in something or nail something, maybe, without beating our hands to death. But, but to build a home is different. That takes the wisdom of God. When we, when we can uh, know how to drive a tractor, a lot of you know how to drive a tractor, but to raise a crop of corn is a different situation. 
You see, sometimes we got to understand that it takes wisdom to know even how to grow a crop of corn. Wisdom to know enough that God has to do his part or it ain't going to grow. I was examining uh, some of the corn the other day in a, in a field, just uh, walked over in the field, not in the field where I live, but somewhere else. And, uh, and I know how to measure uh, uh, one thousandth of an acre off in a row. And so I stepped it off and counted the stalks, and there were 36 stalks. They had 36,000 population in that. And out of that 36, there were 20 ears, 20 stalks that had an ear of corn. And out of the 20, only seven of them would I call an actual ear. The rest of them was what my dad used to call nubbins. <laughs> we throwed them in the back of the wagon, the horses ate them. You know, that was early in my life, by the way. And, and so, uh, you know, it takes more than that to raise a crop. We got to understand that God is part of the equation. It's not all fertilized seed and, and insecticide or, or, or a, a, a weed eater or whatever. And listen, it, it is God also. So we don't know how to build a home, and we don't know how to raise a crop, and, and, and you know, you can know where children come from. Most of you do. <laughs> but that will not make a family. Did you know that? That won't make a family. God has to come into the equation to make a family. And when, when God comes into this equation, then wisdom comes into this equation and helps us to, to understand what it really takes to do what we're called to do. You may be a, a home builder. You, you may be a, a farmer. You, you may be a, a someone uh, that is raising a family. May I say to you, if you're doing that in the flesh and on your own, you're not doing a very good job. It's just the way it is. How do you know that, preacher? Because I tried that at one, at one time. I didn't have God in the equation when my family was first born. When, when you see, when we, when we look at ourselves and we can figure out somehow in our uh, understanding of anything that there's something missing in the equation, then we have to add God to it. Because God is the deciding member of the equation of intellect that makes us have wisdom, whether we want it or not. Wisdom comes from God. Well, God made the foolishness of this world, and, and he's standing in front of you uh, to be able to preach uh, the wisdom of God in a way that people would hear it. You, you see, it seems like to, to people that don't know, and it just mentions the Greeks here especially, that they were seeking, you know, the things, uh, uh, you know, they were seeking a God. They had all these gods. When Paul went there, he, he saw all these gods, and he saw an occasion, and God gave him wisdom. One of those gods said to the unknown God, in case we missed one, there he is. And Paul, in the wisdom of God, not man, he said, you know that, that one statue ha you have, that's to the unknown God, said, I know who he is. And I want to tell you about him. I want to tell you about him. And he began to preach to them Jesus. You, you see, when, when we know what God wants us to do, and we have no idea how we're going to do it, then we go to God and we ask him for the wisdom to be able to, to understand the foolishness of, of things that men and women and boys and girls see that it might become wisdom to them. And the only equation, listen to me now, the only equation in this world is God, the only one. He adds everything to what we say. Maybe you're a teacher, and maybe you can't sometimes figure out what in the world to say. You know, sometimes uh, uh, in, in, when I went to Bible college, and we're teaching us, what, what happens when, uh, when you get up to preach and your mind just totally goes blank? <laughs> now, don't comment on that, because I know your preacher's always blank, amen? 
But, but when, we, when your mind goes blank and you just can't think of anything, what do you do? He said, just begin to read Scripture. Because there's wisdom in Scripture. There's wisdom in what thus saith the Lord. If we just make up something to say, that's in our flesh. And no good thing could come from our flesh, amen? So it is the Scripture of God. The Scripture, the, the inerrant, perfect, infallible Word of God that we can share with people. What wisdom could it be any better than that? You and I need to learn how to perfect the wisdom that God has given us. Wisdom is important in our lives. <laughs> we, tell the, we tell the story, and the Spirit of God tells the rest of the story. I've told you this several times, and I think it bears selling again. I don't know how many times I can tell you that, that I've preached what I felt like God would have me preach, and preached it the best I knew how, which is not all that great, but the best I know how. And the Spirit of God has used that message in ways that I had never thought about. I remember the points that I had uh, on one sermon especially. And the points that I had were, uh, I mean, well thought. And, and, uh, and I looked up, researched, and, and I wrote them down, and I, I had them down right, and they were right. And, and, and the points that I was making was pointed into the things that we need to adhere to in Scripture. And when I got to the back of the room to shake someone's hand on the way out, it says, thank you, preacher. They hugged me and said, thank you for helping me today. And they began to share how that I helped them. My friend, I did not help them one lick. They didn't know it. I helped them none. You see, they heard a whole different message than what I preached at. They had all different points that came to them than what the points that I were trying to make. And it was so different. It was so different. Where did it come from? It didn't come from me. It come from the Spirit of God. Because God changes something to fit the person. I cannot. In every ounce of wisdom that I have, I can't do that. God does that. And when we rely on him, it changes the equation. It changes the equation. May I say to you today, if you're not relying on him, then who is it that you're relying on? Let me give you some notations here. Some of you may be relying on your money. It'll let you down. Hmm? You, you may be relying on your job. You may get laid off. You, you're relying on your business. It may dry up. You can rely on all kinds of things, your retirement, your, your, your Medicare, your, your, your Social Security, your everything that we rely on. May I say to you, if it does not have God in the equation it could let you down any moment. You see, he wants us to rely on him. So how do we begin to do that? We begin to understand that his word is truth. It's not partially truth. It's not partially right and some mistakes. In, no, it's totally right. And it's perfect in every way. So when, when we look at it and we understand it, we begin to read it and we begin to study on it. And we begin to see the wisdom that God had, even from the beginning. I'm thinking about the Spirit of God. Oh, well, the Spirit has never been, uh, you know, not always been with us. I mean, it was, you know, everybody knows, you know, at Pentecost, the, the Spirit came as the comforter that would come and, and help us and reveal to us and all of the things that was going, I'm going away, I'm going to send you a comforter. And he came. Listen, that same Spirit working in a different way was there brooding over the waters in Genesis. Huh? Always been there. John 1 says, that the Word was God, and He was there in the beginning, and He created everything and made everything that was. And yet, sometimes we try to figure out 
what we need to make next and how, you see, it's in the foolishness of that stuff. How did we get there? We got there because of sin. How do we get away from there? It's that we begin to understand that sin is sin and it's wrong and we need to abandon it and put our faith and trust in Christ and allow the Holy Spirit to give us wisdom, more wisdom. And Listen, when's the last time you prayed for wisdom? <laughs> Most of us learned to pray for wisdom after we got burnt by a used car. The next car I buy, I'm going to pray over it next time. <laughs> Dear God, is this the right car? Nope. Okay, I'm out of here. But it looks really nice, Lord. And you just come down another hundred bucks. I think I'm going to take it anyhow. You ever do something like wisdom from God? Come on. You say what God says to you in the answer that he gives you, abide by the answer. Don't try to fudge on the answer that God gives you. Wisdom begins when we believe God. I mean, when we believe what he says. <laughs> and yet, mankind over the years has went from the wisdom of God to the wisdom of man. And we have been going downhill ever since. Where are you at in that? Are you going downhill too? You see, when we think about ourselves, the Bible teaches us to think about others. But, but, we're, but we're just kind of caught up on ourselves. And we're trying to figure out how we can keep what we got and not get loose of that and gain more somehow. And yeah, wisdom would be okay. I could get some of that too. Listen to me. Wisdom becomes priority in your life when you begin to think about other people more than you think about you. Did you get that? Wisdom becomes paramount in your life when you begin to think about other people and their feelings and all about them more than you think about you. The Bible teaches that all through Scripture. We got our own way of thinking. Do unto others as you would have them do unto us. Only do it first. That's the way we think. But you see, God wants us to do unto others as we would have them to do unto us without recompense. In other words, we just, whatever it is, let her go. You say, well, I've been beat up and beat on and messed with so many times. I don't trust anybody then just put your trust in God and let him deal with it. Huh? Did you ever think of that? You say, yeah, but what? When, when, if we're going to have the wisdom of God, we're going to have to know him personally. Do you know him personally? If you don't know him personally, you don't have any wisdom. You're just living in the flesh. Whatever bothers you, you just roll off Make go crazy. Listen to me. When we know him, we begin to understand that God loves them also, loves us also. He loves us all. And although some folk are not doing what they ought to do, and maybe they have done some things to us, the Bible says that we need to forgive them anyhow. Would that be too much to bear? If it is, that's where the wisdom of God comes in because he said, you can only do that through me because I forgave you when you were wrong and I were right. You were wrong. You deserved the cross, but I went to the cross for you. That's love. That's God's wisdom. It turns it totally around from the wisdom of man. And that's the kind of wisdom that we need. Have you got it? 
Have you got that kind of wisdom? I dare say if you don't have that kind of wisdom, or at least the beginnings of it, that you're not a child of the living God. And you need to ask him to forgive your sin and come into your life. And you know what he does? He imputes righteousness to us. We don't, there's nothing right about us. He imputes us in. I mean, he installs righteousness in us. When we deserve hell, he installs righteousness in us. He imputes it. Not because we deserve it, but because he paid the price for our sins. If you haven't experienced the forgiveness of God, it's going to be really, really, really hard for you to forgive someone else that has, that has beat up on you. Let him change you and mold you and make you into the wisdom of God that you too would be wise enough to forgive those that so hurt you. Would you try him today? Let him have his way in your life. Stand with me, would you? Father, we're thankful today that we have the Lord in our life, and thank you, Lord, today for the mercy that you've given each one of us. We don't deserve it. We, we really deserved hell, but by your grace, you saw fit to come and die for us while we were yet sinners. You died in, a, in our place. And we look back at that cross and we say, how in the world can that happen? And we declare, Lord, that, that you were God, that you could do that. You could do anything you wanted to do, but why would you do that with us? And we're, we're bewildered as to why. But then, Lord, we read your word and, and we discover that there's wisdom in what you did. Wisdom. And Lord, if there be any wisdom in us, we'll accept what you did on the cross for us. And Lord, there may be some folk here today that when I ask the question, are you wise, that they couldn't really say they were. And when I said, have you forgiven folk, they couldn't quite come to that place. And I pray, Father, today, just now, your Holy Spirit might deal with every heart in this place. And may we not leave here until that one, that 10, that 20, or however many would come to you and ask you to help them to forgive others that have so hurt them in the past. And Lord, then to come into their life and to help them to be wise and not foolish again, not vain in our imaginations, not, not going in places that we ought not to be, doing things we ought not to do, but to pay attention to what you said would help us to be wise. God, would you help us today? Speak to the hearts of those that need you today. And I ask it in Jesus' name, with your heads bowed and eyes closed. If you're here today, and you would say, Preacher, I don't know Christ as my Savior. I don't think I have any wisdom much in my life. I know some things, but I, I, I can't really say it. I have a lot of wisdom, and I just want to come today and ask the Lord to forgive my sin and come into my life and change me and mold me and make me into something that I can't be without him. Would you come? Just step out and come right now. Maybe you're here today and you're saying, Preacher, I've already trusted the Lord as my Savior, but these Issues come up all the time. One of those issues is that I have trouble forgiving people, and I just need to come today and say, God, would you give me wisdom and understanding? Will you give me your wisdom to use today? I need the help that only you can give me. I can go to the preacher, and he can counsel me, and I can go to my friends that are Christians, and they'll counsel me and help me. But Lord, you're the one that does the work. 
I don't want to come directly to you. Would you just step out and come right now? It's me. Lord, I need your help today. I need more wisdom in my life. I'm coming. Would you come? If he's speaking to you, step out and come. Father, we're thankful today for your spirit. Thank you for your grace and for your wisdom. Lord, I pray that everything is as it should be just now. I pray, Father, that there's wisdom in every life in this place. If not, would you reveal it, Lord? May this be the day when they get victory from that. Thanks for joining us. Please like and subscribe to our channel. Also, follow us on the Mixler app and on Facebook, or visit our website, lighthousememorial.com. God bless.